ASML is a Dutch company that is adamantly independent. Although it has partnered with Samsung, Intel, and Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, also known as TSMC, it maintains its independence because all three compete for the right to buy ASML machines for making the world's most advanced microchips. ASML holds an utter monopoly on extreme ultraviolet, aka EUV lithography, and there are no competitors to their expertise. They developed a proprietary technology for producing this tiny EUV wavelength, which is the only way to produce modern microchips, and it cost them decades and billions upon billions of dollars to create, which they obtained by partnering with those big three, Samsung, Intel, and TSMC. People have fought to buy them. Current market value is on the order of greater than $193 billion. ASML holds a unique position in the marketplace as the sole proprietor of the machines that can make the most advanced microchips in the world. Each unit is $200 million, containing 100,000 parts, and requires three 747 aircrafts to transport it. And again, these are the only machines capable of producing the world's most advanced microchips. Making a microchip is an intense process using lithography. A silicone wafer is built up with a layer of multi-millions of transistors. Then another layer is added, and this layering repeats as many as 100 times. Each ultra-advanced and tiny chip is made to nanometer precision making virtually every sophisticated electronic thing on the planet possible. They're amazing tech. Chips went from hundreds of nanometers in the 1990s down to the very best we have today, single digit size. Competition between manufacturers like Samsung, Intel, and TSMC called for new creations like seven nanometer chips and now just five nanometers with a possibility of three nanometers soon. The U.S. used to produce 37% of the world's microchips. It's now about 12%. Canon and Nikon camera companies usurped the lead, dominating that market in the 1980s by using photographic techniques to place hundreds of transistors on a chip. ASML decided to explore a more complex path to making chips using ultraviolet light. The shorter wavelength allowed them to place thousands of transistors on a single, smaller chip. Eventually, it became millions, and ultimately, billions. It took a lot of time and unimaginable amounts of money, but they are so far in the lead now that no company can catch up in less than 10 years. Due to the physics of the universe, we may have reached a fundamental limit due to quantum mechanics. Electrons can spontaneously jump gaps less than 3 nanometers, which is called quantum tunneling. This would make the data random, unpredictable, and therefore useless. ASML's next machine, which may make the final 3 nanometer step possible, will cost over $300 million. How they do it? Ultraviolet light is not difficult to produce in the part of the light spectrum we're familiar with on a day-to-day -day basis. A more cutting-edge form, deep ultraviolet, also known as DUV, was used for the technological advance which made 7 nanometer chips possible. It took the super shortwave extreme ultraviolet, completely invisible to the human eye, to make 5 nanometer chips. The problem was that natural EUV cannot be found on Earth. It is absorbed by everything, even air and glass. The only option was to create it in situ, in a vacuum, by continuously vaporizing micro droplets of molten tin in a laser to create a burst of EUV. This happens uninterrupted at a rate of 50,000 per minute. The EUV created is absorbed so fast by the environment that only 5% of the light ever gets to the lithographic printer so the chips can be produced. To get the light where it needs to go, it has to be reflected and focused by mirrors with near-perfect surfaces. Zeiss, the optical company, makes the mirrors that are so good that if they were expanded to the width of North America, the biggest deviation on their surface would be less than the thickness of your thumbnail. 
The mirrors used in these machines are quite accurately referred to as the world's flattest surfaces. Using multiple mirrors, the light is more and more tightly focused until it has atomic level accuracy. Without this, 5 nanometer scale lithography would not be even possible. Why are microchips important? Bitcoin may be a great investment, or it may not. But whatever happens to it and all the other blockchain cryptocurrencies in the end, it has caused some clearly unforeseen consequences. In simple form, cryptocurrencies must be calculated in order to exist. They must be the result of trillions of mathematical computer operations to fulfill the requirements of an essentially unalterable algorithm. Those calculations take computing power. And the more transistors you can throw at the problem, the faster you can solve it. CPUs are not ideal for this. Video cards, on the other hand, are expressly designed and optimized to handle billions of mathematical operations in order to generate high quality, high resolution, and high frame rate images on screen. Instead of using expensive CPUs, the miners used banks and banks of video cards to turn an ordinary desktop computer into a little supercomputer. The fate of crypto is not our concern hundreds of thousands of miners buying all the fastest video cards became a problem for everybody. Video cards that cost two or three hundred dollars were good for the task, so miners bought them up until there were very few remaining for people that were making computers for themselves or for their customers. Entire pallets of video cards were purchased in bulk and then sold on platforms like eBay or the dark net and individual cards rose in price to one thousand dollars or more. Miners were buying up chips faster than they could be produced, and the computing world experienced severe shortages. Export Restrictions There was money to be made, so many countries stepped up production. Of course, people wanted the latest chips. But for everyday items like refrigerators and e-bikes, older 7 nanometer chips would do the job. Being able to make 5 nanometer chips would bring in the most money, of course. So Japan and Taiwan profited. Countries like China are still years, possibly decades, away from being able to copy EUV technology. The situation is likely to persist as geopolitics continues to dominate the world stage. Of course, there is a wealth element to the situation, as there always is, but to those outside of China and its allies, there is a much stronger element of human rights. The Chinese government believes in rights for the politically powerful and the wealthy, but everyone else is unimportant, expected to follow orders, and entirely disposable. The rest of the free world is not happy about that. In response, China is stepping up its efforts to forcibly make the independent state of Taiwan part of China. Taiwan is a leading producer of EUV chips, and it has had technology and expertise since 2017, as well as a highly sophisticated EUV educational training system for chip manufacturers and producers. Other countries are supporting Taiwan independence, as you've probably read in the news. If China were to annex Taiwan, the inevitable outcome is cutting off supplies of a massive percentage of all modern chips to the world markets. That is currently about 21% of the world's supply of EUV chips, plus all the other general purpose chips. Fate of the world Compromising the availability of chips will threaten everything from smartphones to medical equipment, from nuclear submarines to wireless communications, and ultimately, even the servers and facilities that power the Internet itself. In cooperation with other countries, the United States worked to create restrictions on ASML by putting pressure on the Dutch government. ASML is reliant on many worldwide technology producers in order to create its machines. Consequently, ASML was obliged not to sell the EUV machines to China or its partners. To this day, they still haven't done so, but they do sell earlier versions to China that cannot make the latest modern chips. Chips Axe Several countries have created Chips Axe, including Taiwan, Japan, Europe, Australia, and leading the charge, the United States. These are designed to encourage microchip manufacturers to build their facilities elsewhere, such as in Europe, the United States, and so on. By diversifying production, there is less of a threat to the world's supply of microchips, not to mention a significant uptick in the capability to supply more chips for the world at large. 
TSMC has already been persuaded to build a plant in the U.S. to make 5 nanometer chips with $12 billion in tax aid or relief. Other outside and domestic companies such as Texas Instruments are going to take advantage of the $53 billion the U.S. has put on the table to get a national manufacturing capability which is closer and safer outside the influence of China.